On the 6th of October, it will be nearly 23 months since Conor McGregor's last professional mixed martial arts fight. Andrew McGahan here sitting in SVG Ireland alongside John Kavanagh, who many times in interviews has told me that ring rust does not really exist. Why will it not exist on the 6th of October? Um, I think it's how you approach training. I think if, you're, if your gym environment and how you train in the gym is very separate to how you compete, then for sure there will be ring rust. But if you are regularly putting yourself in stressful types of sparring situations, which is as best as we can get in, um, in the gym environment, it more resembles competition then. So Connor's this specific for this, very much for this training camp, we had a lot of um, very intense training sessions, sparring sessions, and it's done in the environment that he's going to compete in, and we even had spectators for a lot of his spars. So we're trying to make the training environment as closely mimic the competition environment so that there isn't that much of a disconnect between the two of them. Do you feel as a coach that that was an interesting bridge for you to maybe come across? Because you've had to manage so many fighters here in the last couple of years that those guys couldn't train in that way, even if maybe they wanted to train that way for their fights, you would want them to get into the fight safe, healthy, and be able to compete at their best. But now maybe as the stakes have risen, as the occasion has risen, that Connor can't train that way anymore, that it needs to be those hard spars, that it needs to be tough guys who are willing to come and try and walk through the shots. Uh, it, 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 I guess it depends a little bit on where the fighter is in their career, how their training is going to be so specific for them, as opposed to when someone's maybe coming up through the amateur ranks. But I would still say that regardless of whether the spar is quote-unquote dangerous, even for a jiu-jitsu player getting ready for a competition, you can mimic to a closer degree than just rolling with your mates in, in an open environment. Whereas if the coach says to you, okay, tomorrow, you versus your toughest sparring partner, Dave in the gym, that's always bridge and roll and now you're mount and he's hard to take down. And we're going to do it with the whole group watching and I'm going to award points as it goes along. You'll wake up that morning with a similar feel. You know, where a reptilian brain, that midbrain is not so developed as to really be able to differentiate between, you know, the, where the competition is held, even though it's only in a gym environment and maybe it's only a grappling environment. So you know there's no real physical damage can be done. So yeah, I, I, with all of my guys we do um, simulated, we call them simulated fights if you want to call them spars, and some of them are for grappling competitions and some of them are for kickboxing, some of them are for MMA. Um, so it's more the, the psychological part of it rather than just the, the physical heavy impact side of it. So with that, even if we look at the aspect of say how a, a fighter's brain may react if they know that they're coming in for a specific sort of training, Many people that I've met that have trained and many coaches have always said that when a particular student who's gifted or um, has a natural like, aptitude for what they're doing, when they take a certain amount of time away from it and they come back, they will almost feel that they've been better. Maybe because that they've been thinking about it, maybe because they really do enjoy it that much. Did you notice something like that with Connor when he returned from primarily just worrying about hands, head movement, shoulder, mm -hmm. like anything to do with boxing, and then reincorporated everything for mixed martial arts? Yeah, that, that's, um, that's an interesting observation and it's, I, in fact, I, I think I struggle to think of a time where someone didn't have a couple of months off and didn't actually come back with a, a, an improvement from a technical point of view. Now, what will sometimes go away is a, a, a sense of timing and cardiovascular ability. That, that for sure goes away. However, our old strength and conditioning coaches used to say, get a donkey fit. It's, it's easy to get somebody fit. That's just hard work, you know, and you, you, there's, there's systems you have to follow. That's not hard. Skills take a long time to develop. And th those skills seem to come back a little bit sharper. So we need to get the timing back with sparring, and we need to get the heart and lungs back with, with, with hard physical work. Do you feel that, because you've often spoken about matchups and how, as a fan, primarily they excite you, you're now over 10 years into Connor's pro career in terms of having the best seat in the house, as you say, watching the fights. Surely this is the most basic of style versus style encounter that Connor has had maybe since the start of his professional career. Are you excited for that from the point of view that as you were a fan of UFC 1, that's how you got into things, you like those matchups? Are you just constantly bringing the correlation back to that? Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's interesting. Um, what's funny is, is that it's similar to Nate, but for completely different stylistic reasons. Like if you're fighting Nate, you're probably not dealing with a whole lot of takedowns. You know, he doesn't shoot in all that often. He's, you're probably not dealing with a whole lot of kicks. 
maybe not even knees and elbows. Like it's it's almost like just dealing with a boxing match. So that was, that was it's not a singular almost a singular style approach to, to fighting. Now he's brilliant at that, and it was I, I love that fight, and I always say I would love to see a trilogy. Um, and now with, with Habib, um, he actually probably brings more to that problem than, than even Nate because with, with Habib he will throw shots I mean his last fight he was I think mostly stand up even after the first round um, but yes I, if we were to if we were to be betting we can probably guess that he's going to try and shoot from the locker room you know it, it, right at the start of round one like he did in the Alaquinta fight there's probably a low single coming right away I find it very hard to imagine that they have any plans for any exchanges on the feet. Do you think that coming from such a good background and maybe the fact that they, he is undefeated, that the thought of losing isn't actually entering his head so that they know that the goal may be come out low single and they're not even considering an alternative because it has never needed to come to that point before, whereas Connor has lost before in professional mixed martial arts, so he understands that you need to have roots, you need to have backups, you need to know what's going to happen if something doesn't go to plan. Yeah, I do. Um, like, I do think he, he was, uh, not that he went for a huge amount of takedowns, but he did start failing on his takedowns against Aliquint, and then he went back to, he had that nice jab he was using in the fight. So I guess, you know, he's rounding out his game, he's obviously he's with AKA, a very uh, strong kickboxing background uh, with Mendes. Um, so I suppose you do have that as a, as a, as, as a plan B. Um, but yeah, no, uh, what you were saying at the start there, it is interesting fighting an unbeaten fighter. There, uh, you know, I, I've had a lot of my guys that went a long time unbeaten and then they have the loss. And it's always interesting to see in that fight that they had their first loss, how when things start to go wrong, it, it's, it's an unusual feeling for them. And sometimes they struggle to deal with that. I don't think Habib has lost a single round in his UFC career. So if you do go and lose a round, how, are you going to be able to come back out with that same level of confidence in the next round? So uh, there's a lot of interesting things to be to be played out in this fight. And just even on that, do you feel that maybe coming from someone who doesn't compete at that level and doesn't, I know that mixed martial arts fighters have the utmost of respect for each other for getting into the cage to begin with, but is there a certain satisfaction in taking a potential zero away from somebody who had previously boasted such an impressive unbeaten record? Absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, it's no, it's no uh, mystery It's no, to say that Gabib is the, the boogeyman of, of the of, the, of all divisions really at the moment that there's not really another well there isn't another unbeaten champion that I can think of no I don't think so not that I think um, and just that constant uh, aggressive wrestling style it's for anyone that's 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 tough to face so to actually beat that guy beat the guy that everybody is saying is unbeatable um, be a huge huge uh, feather in the cap to do that so in relation to this one, from the fans that are watching and maybe thinking, are we going to see what we've seen before from McGregor, do you think that this could be the, the fight in particular where we see different facets of his game, or is it just going to be business as usual? Are the fans that are expecting a knockout going to be treated? Um, I mean, like besides, like I said, the Nate fight, you know, the Aldo fight's just so quick, there's not really a lot to take away from it. He's generally facing somebody that he's better on the feet, and he's picking them off, and, and they're trying to take him down. That's been the standard fight that he's had, where it's Mendes or even the Eddie fight a few times. Eddie got him on the fence, was trying to take him down. But this is against somebody that does that better than anybody that he's faced before. We have to be straight about that. So I, th I do think it's going to be a lot of the positions that we've seen him in before, uh, but it's against somebody that's, like I said, doing it at a, a very high level. So John, very quickly, uh, actually two things. Joanna, you commented on something that Joanna tweeted the other day. Now, I don't know if you remember, 2013, I had a very similar experience with a Mr. Conor McGregor criticising what I was wearing that day. <laughs> <laughs> now, but Joanna, fair play to her, because to be honest, I love seeing that. After being at those events for so many years, there are always the people who show up to ask a question, to try and get that headline, to try and get that negative story. And for a fighter to call somebody out like that, I was, I was amazed because you hate internet trolls. <laughs> so what's your take on that incident? And would you have handled it similarly or differently? Yeah, I, I, I don't hate internet trolls. I, I, I genuinely don't. I just, I, I mean, everybody has seen the clip and Joanna is a, is a rock star. Thank you very much, Joanna. Um, you know, the, the point the guy was making that uh, Connor is all talk and hasn't really achieved anything, it's just nonsense talk. If you want to say that he talks a lot and 
maybe he's over the top, he's brash and arrogant. Okay, that's your opinion, that's fine. But to say he hasn't achieved anything, so for Johan the pull up and goes, wait, wait, did he not have two, uh, two belts and two weight classes? So it was a bit of fun and I, I enjoyed it. I, I nearly I think every sorry for him, that. like pulling him under the camera. <laughs> yeah. The man wanted to crawl into the smallest space. Yeah, yeah. We finish as always with a prediction. And I know that there may not be many predictions given before uh, October 6th. I think we are just under three weeks now away from fight night. What is John Cavanagh's prediction? My prediction is it's going to be a great fight. Oh, fantastic, of course. On the fence as always. John Cavanagh, <laughs> thank you very much. And I'll see Thanks, you in Las guys. Vegas. Appreciate that. Thank you.